Hi, I'm Jandrik and today we're going to talk about the themes and concepts of biology as an introduction to our course. Okay, so we begin by asking what is life? So even a child can distinguish a dog and a stone. Okay, a dog as a living thing and a stone as a non-living thing. Now, if you're going to ask what is life to science, to empirical science, it would seek complex answers to that seemingly simple question. Because by asking what is life, you're not actually asking that simple question. Eh? That question is actually a very complicated question. That would be answered by at least giving you the fundamental properties of life, of what we call as life. Okay, so we have seven fundamental properties of life which include biological organization, reproduction, growth and development, response to the environment or stimuli, metabolism, homeostasis, and evolution. So basically, all of these are shared by all living organisms from as simple as a bacterium to as complex as an elephant, a human, um, a whale, a lion, all of those plants, those living things should possess these seven fundamental properties of life to be of course considered as a living thing okay so we start with biological organization biological organization is said to be an intricate order of structures in living things as simple as an atom to the biosphere now what's the implication of this intricate order of structures in all organisms because of that because of that um, arrangement because of that organization we have what we call as emergent property at each level so what do you mean by emergent property these are properties that arise because of the combination of those components below that level however that property is actually absent among those components and it only appear at that level okay so we will go deeper at least on the basic concepts about emergent properties um, by by as by trying to to enumerate those levels okay so we start with atoms so it is said that atoms are the simplest substances that make up all types of matter and when they undergo chemical reactions, they form molecules or compounds. So, sir, asa man diha ang emergent properties. Now, take for example the sodium chloride or the table salt. The table salt is a compound which is made up of a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. Table salt is said to be salty because we can taste it. And because we can taste it, we can actually consume it it's edible now with that in mind you have to look into the components sodium and the chlorine sodium is a metal uh, as, as an element while chlorine is an element that is uh, gas and is poisonous to humans so it means that those properties individual properties of those atoms have been def uh, refined and become different when they become sodium chloride okay when they become sodium chloride there is another property that appeared na wala sa katong individual atoms and that is being salty and that is being edible that's one of the examples another one is sa ato ang water a water molecule is a single water molecule is composed of what? A hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms, and an oxygen. Now, unsa man dayon? A single water molecule, moron pala lang, di ba? Pero when you, when you have a lot of water molecules, there is an emergent properties that occurred or appeared among those interactions. And what is that emergent property? The hydrogen bonding. Because of that hydrogen bonding, okay, among those water molecules, it had 
certain properties po. On what are those? Uh, katong ginatawag na ito nga adhesion, those things called um, cohesion, surface tension, those things are, are actually the emergent properties of water molecules. Okay? So, as a whole, those are their properties. But as a single water molecule, dili to siya mo occur. Okay? So, that is how you uh, think of emergent properties. You need certain components for that emergent property, for that property to emerge. Okay? Now, those molecules or katong combination of dif the same or different atoms, nai two types niya. We have the organic and inorganic molecules. Now, under sa organic molecule nato, we have the, the term called biomolecules. And sa biomolecules, we have at least four broad types pod, which include lipids, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and the proteins. So, sa lipids, daghang pod na siya yung klase. For the nucleic acids, we also have RNA and DNA. And then, sa carbohydrates, we have a lot of types of carbohydrates depending on what kind of classification you're going to follow. And for the proteins, we also have different types of proteins according to structure and to the function. So, these four biomolecules bio are actually found, according to researches before, hundreds of years ago, are found in our system, in our in our body. Okay? So, that's why they term it biomolecules. Kasi, um, this... Uh, large molecules are actually uh, seen on all uh, on all living organisms. So, the term it bio means life. Nga, di ba? So, molecules, of course, those large substances that found on the body of those organisms. So, now, according to their own structures, the high classic classing uh, properties. For example, si lipid, Lipid is a nonpolar na molecule. It means it is electrically neutral, while si nucleic acids has its own um, properties, both carbohydrates and proteins. Now, with giving it um, a specific arrangement, okay, specific arrangements sa uh, iyang structure, they could form various cell organelles or organelles okay so on sa mandayon they could for example this one is a cell membrane so here various uh, biomolecules could be found in a whole stretch of cell membrane in, in this diagram which include glycoproteins or a combination of carbohydrate and protein and then we also have lipids but you have to keep in mind that when you when you encounter the term um, cell membrane, you have to think of phospholipid. So these heads here are what the phosphate group, and then kanipudria are the phosphate group. They form a bilayer such that monosha ang morag mahimong basehan nato for the term semi-permeable membrane. So, this is just to for you to appreciate that cell organelles are actually made up of um, lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Okay? And then, of course, various cell organelles, depending on the lung structure, could form a cell. And it depends on what kind of cell is that. It could be eukaryotic or prokaryotic. Prokaryotic organisms are those bacteria and ar archaean organisms Pro means old or before. So basically, they appear first before the eukaryotic organisms. Kita. Okay? Eukaryotic organisms are much more complex. Sa ilahang cells, it is membrane bound. So na ay membrane diha sa yang cell. Unlike sa ato ang prokaryotic organisms nga, wala. Okay? So that is how you think of these emergent properties. And Accordingly, cell is the basic unit of life. Nga nung cell is the basic unit of life, man. Kasi, those seven basic proper, uh, fundamental properties nga na-mentioned kanina are actually found 
at least in the cell. Meaning, sa ato ang diagram diri ang from atom to ecosystem, ang mahitabo is that those properties can occur at least in a cell. So, may mga example. Karang sa mga bacteria na to, okay? Those organisms has the ability to respond to the stimulus, to to homeostasize, to metabolize, and everything. They can reproduce on their own. So, in ana, that is why cell is the basic unit of life. Kasi nga, all of those fun, all of those properties which are considered fundamental for an entity to be called living are found in what? In that cell. Kaya nga, cell is the basic unit of life. Life cannot occur within cell organelles. Life cannot occur within molecules. Life cannot occur within atoms. It can only occur at least in the cell and above. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng cell is the basic unit of life. So we proceed usually for some exemptions. Uh, for example, some multicellular organisms, we still have tissue. So bacteria, they don't have tissue na kasi nga, um, they are single-celled organisms. So, at least one cell is considered an organism now. But for multicellular organisms, we still have some further organization sa ato ang cells, which is, one of which is the tissue. So, tissue is the collection of similar types of cells, okay? Similar types of cells that work together and carry out the same function. Meaning, what's the difference now between organ and tissue? Well, of course, higher level ang organ. But, if you if you would read the definition of tissue, similar types of cells. Epithelial tissue, meaning, when you say epithelial tissue, it means that all of those cells within the tissue are called epithelial cells. And, ara siya simple. And then, when you say organ, when you say organ, it means different types of cells, which means different tissues. Okay? For example, here, this is an example of a diagram of a stomach. Okay? Tiyan. So, what's the very main purpose of the stomach? To what? To digest food. Okay? How does it digest food? It digests food by chemical breakdown using hydrochloric acid or what we call as the gastric juice. So, makita na ito nga daghan siya ay Layers and each layer constitutes different tissues. So na I surface epithelium, which is constituted with gastric pits and parietal cells, and dagan padriya mga mga endocrine cells diriya. So kanisya kining mga 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 pits diriya. They produce what? They produce the acid. And uh, these things here or this layer, the mucosa is a one whole tissue and then submucosa is a different tissue muscularis externa is a different tissue pod serosa is a different tissue but they perform or they they perform different functions uh, depending on tissue and each tissue tissue is made up of the same cells okay i hope that is clear and the very main purpose nila or the very main goal nila is to digest the food so for example na layer dia sa to ang lining sa stomach that prevents the acid to digest the lining. Nai nga na. So, I hope that clears up our mind when it comes to tissue and organ. Now, sa organ system, dali na na siya, it means um, different organs that constitute or performs a coordinated function for a certain vital uh, process sa ang lawas, which of course, for example, here, in this illustration, we have the cardiovascular system, so na na sila isa ka role, and then the muscular system and the skeletal system. And all of those systems in a multicellular organism would what? End up with an organism, a whole organism. Now, na na tadiri ah, organism. What is a population? So, si population, for example, kana organism na na siya. So, that organism, if not by the same type of that organism, we call that as a species. So, we define the population, a group of individuals of the same species living and interbreeding within a given area. 
And you have to keep in mind na walay word na species sa biology or sa science. Okay? Plural, singular, that is species. Okay? So, a group of individuals of the same species. So, i-relate na to sa illustration. Let's say, for example, we are talking about a lion kanina. And then, we have we have ano, an individual lion. And the same species of that lion in that given area, in that given time, we call it at, as a population. Okay? And then, the next level is a community. So, si community, dalit na siya subton, different populations, kanina we're talking about lions, and then we have elephants, we have zebras, we have grasses, and all those bacteria in the in that pond, that's community. Okay, so, allow me to read, community refers to the assemblage of interacting organisms, either of the same or different species, coexisting in a particular area and time. So, that's community. So, at least the I, na I difference si population and community. Population refers only to the same, to individuals of the same species, community, daghan na siya ng klase sa population that interacts with each other. Now, what about ecosystem? Ecosystem refers to all the interacting forces, biotic and abiotic factors. When you say biotic, means living things. Abiotic means non-living. So, diri ah, sa atong illustration, we have the tree, we have the leopard, giraffes, um, lions, grasses, and all those animals here interacting with the with each other and with the abiotic components of the ecosystem which include uh, we have the the stones the soil the rocks okay the water um the air so those things are abiotic and they interact now when you say bi biosphere biomes those are areas on earth that is or those are areas on earth where life occurred. Okay, so dalit na siya ma-understand. Now, 